If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Ruckus IoT controller dashboard and the various options and statistics that are available to you on the dashboard. There will be subsequent videos to break down each individual page in more detail, as well as things like AP onboarding and, and uh, scanning for devices, etc. But this will give you a pretty good overview of what you can do on the dashboard itself and the options you can add to it. So the first thing we're going to log into our dashboard. And by default, you'll get to the dashboard screen here. And you won't have anything. When you first install your server, you won't see any devices, you won't see any APs, etc. So these will all be blank and they'll populate as you add devices in. Uh, however, with the default layout of the dashboard here, we have devices last seen. You see I have six devices, but they're broken down into, I have four that are, uh, are greater than a day since I've seen them. I have uh, one that was seen in the last five minutes to an hour, and then I have one in less than five minutes. Next thing we have is the number of APs. So I have three APs, and I have one that's offline, and two that are online, and zero that are unapproved. So if, if I had learned any, uh, but had not had yet to approve them, then they would be in there. And again, this is going to break down under IoT AP screen. We'll see some detail on that, and we'll get to that in a minute. Then we have uh, IoT APs by device count. So I have two different uh, APs here with devices on them. So R610-1 has four devices and R610-2 has two devices. Uh, and if you click on those, then it will bring you to that device in the, uh, in the AP screen. So then we can see device by protocol. So I have six Zigbee devices. I don't have any BLE devices and I don't have any wired devices. So those, again, as you learn them or discover them, they will populate. And uh, IoT APs by protocol. So, so how many APs do I have? I have two running Zigbee and I have one, have one running BLE at this point. You can also set other settings. So within the settings, you can edit the dashboard, which basically just gives you the ability to move things around. So if, if you think things are not where you want them to be, or you want to delete them, you can do that out, out of the edit. So we can say done to that. We can reset the widgets back to factory. We can change the refresh interval, how often it refreshes. We could also add a bunch of things. So we can add some, some uh, default widget information should you wish to so you know it's going to add things like what are my active plugins so i have contact and eddie stone but i you know there are other ones as abloy and and soda and others that are available to you total number of aps total devices total beacons total lns hubs uh, so you can add all those should you wish to although that information most of that information is available to you already in the in the other default screens and then lastly reset widgets will just reset your dashboard back to factory. So that's that's the basic dashboard screen, as well as we have some other interesting things. So your version is up here in, in, the, uh, in the top right corner. You can see what version you're running. You can see the current date and time and what what time zone you're set for. This that looks like a power off is actually a log out. So, you know, it's not going to shut the, the controller down. And then we can see the N plus one status. So if you had multiple IoT controller, you could see the status there. In my case, I have N plus one disabled, but you could add that if you want a redundancy on your controllers. We also have, just looking through the screens quickly, there's the, uh, the IoT AP screen, which shows you all of your APs, the status of those APs, and if they were waiting to be approved, you'd see them in here as well. So we have two that are online, we have one that's offline, the name, their max, their IPs, what protocol they're running uh, on their radio, how long they've been up for. You can scan for devices here. So if you want to scan for you know Zigbee or BLE devices, you would do it there. You can delete that AP. Um, you can also add tags to the APs. So when you onboard APs, you can add tags, which you'll see in, a, in another video. And then you have some batch actions that you can do. So if we highlighted multiple, we can do batch things, scan for devices, de-approve them, restart them delete tags, add tags, remove the AP entirely. So those are your 
kind of your batch options. And then lastly on this screen, there's the pre-approved uh, IoT AP. So if you wanted to have them automatically approve when they join the IoT controller, then that is, uh, that is where you would do that. So basically just with their MAC address, either single or batch, you can have them automatically add in there. IoT devices. So this is our discovered devices. And again, there will be another video on discovering and the options therein. But we can see all my devices, green, they're, they're online, their name, their Mac, IoT Mac, what protocol they are, what type of device they are. So some of mine are color dimmable lights, for example. You can see the RSSI and the, and the, and the quality. When the last scene was, you can blacklist it here you can remove it and you have various tags and again you have some batch actions that you can do with those you can also do beacons rather than devices or you can pre-approve so again if once they get discovered you can have them automatically uh, approved rather than you having to go through and approve them events your events that are happening that's uh, pretty straightforward so i have several radio message failures admin uh, options so lots of options within here things like services so the different services that are running to make the make the IoT controller work what plugins you have active your you can change your your account passwords your VM configuration so this is where you would change time zone or NTP server or certificates and uh, DHCP or static IP address your versions and patches so if you wanted to uh, upload a patch, you could do it from here. Back up your database or restore a database would be done in here. Again, the same thing for the rules engine, which we'll talk about next. Licenses are done here. What licenses you have available to you when they expire and the count of those. You have settings here, which there's not much here, but SSH is, is there at the moment. And then reset and reboot. So if you wanted to factory reset your controller, or if you wanted to reboot your controller, that will be done here under admin. The rules is the rules engine. Um, so depending on what you're trying to do, you may be running a rules engine. So in my case, I do have rules already deployed and you can see that you know my various sensors are already integrated into the rules engine. You can see events happening on the rules and you can not just see the rules dashboard, which is what this is, but there's also the configuration engine where you would configure those rules. So that is definitely another video and way outside the scope of this video, but that is the rules engine is, uh, is where most of the uh, great action happens in here. You have LoRa, so LoRaWAN, and then the API. So the API, this is basically just documentation for the API to talk to the controller. So at the moment, at least as of version 151021, these are the available options in your dashboard. And these will change over time. So if you're running an older version, this may look slightly different. And in the future, there will be many other options added in here, but this is where we are in the current state of things for the dashboard. So again, you know, make sure you watch the other videos on various other things, onboarding APs and devices and, and how to configure rules and, and your rules dashboard. Mm -hmm.